is sufficient. I'm on my way home tonight. I said I'm on my way home tonight. Glory to God, another milestone. And we may be there. Another milestone. And we just might anchor over on the other side. Reverend Bobby Akers is holding a revival in his holiness church in Hillsville, Virginia. He believes the power of the Holy Ghost can reveal the hand of God. The Bible says, Praise Him with stringed instruments. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. He shall lie. in using music to praise and glorify God in our worship. Uh, I think that it's a great blessing. Uh, I feel that music is a, a talent that comes from God, people that really are talented to play. Uh, I think the Bible teaches do all you do to the glory of God, so if a person can play, I think they ought to use their talent for the Lord. Uh, still, there's lots of times that when I have a message or something, it bears on me. And uh, I don't get any relief until I deliver that message. And I got no relief from the call until I started preaching. And then when I do preach a message that God has laid on my heart, I get great relief, feel like that I have uh, won a great victory just by uh, preaching the Word of God, just by trying to reach some lost soul for Christ. It's 1 o'clock, time now for the local church service conducted by the Reverend Bobby Akers and the members of the Full Gospel Holiness Church. I'm pressing on. Every Sunday lunchtime, Bobby Akers buys an hour of his local radio station's time broadcast live. During the week, he's a steel worker, but the weekends are dedicated to spreading the gospel with the help of his family and a small but devoted congregation. I know my Lord.
Thank you, kind announcer, for putting us on the air, and greetings, radio friends everywhere. I'd like to say it's a privilege to come back into your homes, automobiles, places of business to bring you another message today from God's written word and also the songs of Zion. Trust that you've been out to the house of the Lord somewhere today enjoying the blessings of God. Get on the foreign line. Get on the right track. Thank God because when the Lord comes back, I won't be found. America is supposed to be one of the greatest religious nations under the sun, but they fastly fallen from God. Amen. Our young people are bound on dope and alcohol. Amen. Sin is rampaging in our streets. Amen. Father rising against father. A brother against brother. A murders being committed throughout the land. And we say we're in a religious nation. Since I found Jesus, I've got joy, thank God. Like the Apostle Paul of old, it's joy. It's unspeakable. And it's full of glory. My God, I'm happy serving the Lord. I'm happy being a Christian. Well, thank God you look up. Amen. Thank God. Take courage. Until next Sunday, Brother Bob, saying so long and may the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank God. God bless everyone. Okay. We're going to ask Brother Kenneth to lead us in prayer. We want everybody to bow in reverence to God and let us pray together. An old-style baptizing at the riverside follows the radio show. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Don't let them go through a day God, without knowing that standing, Lord standing Lord somewhere God. by their side there's a God, God that loves them, Lord, there's a Savior so that, that cares for them, and there's one that holds their hand. Thank God, God that just no matter just which just way they turn and no matter see. where they go, thank God there's a God that cares about them. I was more or less raised in the country. I was backward. I wasn't used to meeting the public a great deal. And it was difficult for me to even stand to preach or to go with the calling. And yet when I would uh, stand before the people, uh, I would feel the uh, anointing of the Lord and, and I would lose all vision of the congregation and I could stand and preach the message that God had laid on my heart. Back in my younger days, I wanted to uh, just work and make a living for my family. But through it all, I uh, kept having the great impression I would go out in the woods to pray or get along, and I would still feel that I was uh, really letting the people down and letting God down because that I was not trying to win them. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize this, our brother, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Everybody praise the Lord one time. So we baptize this, our sister, today, in the name of the Father, name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God. In the obedience of the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we baptize this, our sister, today in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord out there. Obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we baptize our sister in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, and they shall speak in new tongues. Bobby Akers is rebaptizing his wife and son this Sunday. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody lift your hands and praise the Lord. Forms of worship and music that have perished elsewhere in the United States survive today within the Appalachian mountain chain. It sweeps the length of America's east coast for a thousand miles. Since the 17th century, families from England, Scotland, and Ireland have settled here with a fundamentalist faith that helped them through the hardships and loneliness of mountain life. Their ballads and religious songs were kept alive in Baptist churches and isolated mountain communities. In the highlands of Tennessee live two of the last great ballad singers of the Appalachians. They have kept alive the old Baptist hymns they learned from their fathers and grandfathers. Keep your lamps all trimmed and burning over on the other shore. Though very poor and in declining health, Dee and Delta Hicks find comfort in these songs. That bright day might be tomorrow over on the other shore. Keep your lamps all trimmed and burning. Keep your lamps all trimmed and burning. Keep your lamps all trimmed and burning over on the other shore. Now some has fathers gone to glory. Some got fathers gone to glory. Some has fathers gone to glory over on the other shore. That bright day might be tomorrow. That bright day might be tomorrow. That bright day might be tomorrow. Over on the other shore. Back in the old days, they, they told it like it was. They preached the Bible and they preached uh, in the, the interesting parts of it. But now they go to church and they don't, uh, don't preach like they did back in the olden times. So they just preach anything and do anything. They don't go at it like Christ infants do. They're not like they did in the olden times. They used to hold the revivals and people would work in their crops or whatever they're doing until church time. Then they'd hitch up the mules and they'd all get in the wagon and go out to church. But now they've got to have trucks or cars or something to get there. They can't walk a little or they couldn't ride a mule to one of them. one of them. Among the isolated settlers in the Appalachians, different religious sects evolved. The Holiness Church, at one extreme, praised the Lord with stringed instruments and even with popular tunes of the day. They believed in the five signs of revelation, including serpent handling. At the other extreme were the primitive Baptists, many of whom believed music and dance to be the inspiration of the devil. Many thought the holiness worshipers were a little better than geese. As a new materialism invaded the mountains, it met up with a different strain of local music. had found no place among the God-fearing. Known as the devil's music, they were frowned on by the faithful who believed that even hearing, let alone playing them, threatened one's very salvation. The Roan Mountain Hilltoppers carried on regardless. They believe there's no harm in just having yourself a good time.
The moral dilemmas caused by the rigid demands of mountain religion were too much for some people. In their self-imposed exile, they often deemed themselves sinners as they grappled with the conflict of God and devil. A sort of white mountain blues developed, reflecting the anguish and guilt of those who could not quite believe. Another recluse who built his own church as a penance is Virgil Anderson. Yet, on its steps, he plays the kind of earthy blues he heard the black men play in lumber camps. Just one amongst the most old heartbreaking love sick pieces I can get over to you. It goes right down across to your heart, and uh, you think about one of being gone so long. All I'm telling you, I miss you so. Come on back home, baby. I'm crazy. You're killing me, baby. You've been gone so long. You've done the wrong. I miss you so. Virgil believes in praising the Lord with joyful lips and can find no wrong in playing both popular and sacred songs. Yes, I, I don't believe that God means us to, uh, just to sit around with a big long face and grieve around. I, I think he says to eat and drink and be merry, you might, tomorrow you may die, and that's what I believe. Trouble won't last always. No trouble people won't last always. And if we ain't ready for it, We'll be better off if we was never born in this world. That's my belief. Trouble, trouble, there's trouble in this world. Trouble, trouble, there's trouble in this world. Now trouble, trouble, there's trouble here and there. But Lord, Lord, the trouble can't last always. I am so glad that trouble won't last always. I am so glad. Father, is this music that they have here in these churches, is it to glorify your name? Is it to make the people think that they are saved? If a song is sung in the name of our Savior in Jesus Christ, and by a Christian man, I mean one that is saved by the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, then it's good. Roy Gunter, like many a hard-line mountain Puritan, believes most music to be the devil's work. But he's regarded by the citizens of Jamestown, Tennessee, as the proverbial leper. In his isolation, his only company is his savior. This switch is filled with the Holy Spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, Father, this is, this is my father I'm talking to you fellas now. But you, I can't explain it. But it's something other more greater than anything, or uh, my life is more greater than anything that they've got in any of these churches, any of them. I doubt a man a living in Fenners County, Jamestown, or in uh, 
in the state of Tennessee or the state of Kentucky can uh, uh, talk to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at any minute in the day. Well, I'll tell you what, the music on the radio, uh, he won't let me listen to it. I can listen to the news, but Father, can I listen to the, uh, to the music on the radio? I can't listen to it. What's good for me is good for you and for everybody else, for you and all, everybody is the same as long as they obey our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Just beside Roy Gunter's shack is where other Jamestown folk enjoy the pleasure of each other's company. I think it, it, it is built by uh, people that want to have a big time. Is that right, Father? You don't approve of it at all, do you, Jesus? Do you, God? You don't uh, even approve of it. Father, would you want me to go up there? You wouldn't want me to even go on the place, would you? It is not a, a place for a Christian man to go. Break no party and how it is. And I'll tell you something other else. Pride, pride and uh, fast women is the biggest uh, uh, threat to our Christian belief that ever was. That'll cause more people to sin than any other one thing in the world. Break and swing that car lady. And couple out, circle four. Promenade. Eggs double out that old ocean wave in the first couple through now. Separate now, move one way, one other. Break it by circle four. Local honky tonk is discreetly placed a few miles out of town. Sometimes called the House of Lost Souls, it offers the temptation of women and strong drink. this song describes are not the sort the churches deal in. In the words of Isaiah, woe unto them that call good evil and evil good.
The neon lights of Nashville attract many mountain folk who aim to make it big in the country music business. The bars are full of hopefuls and rejects. Oxford left his home in the country while still a child. He came to Nashville dreaming of stardom on the country music scene. After a flood of misadventures and misfortunes, Vernon rediscovered his childhood faith in Jesus, but only after hitting rock bottom in the bars and dives of Nashville. That would be a better way of life. If I started drinking, I must have been 14 or so, and uh, I, you know, drank beer and uh, played my guitar. Didn't run around, I stayed home, you know, and uh, just play and sing, and sang the old Hank Williams stuff, and uh, cry, and it's just miserable. Uh, wasn't like any other teenager, because uh, at the time, uh, the rock and roll rage was on, and I was considered a square, because I still parted my hair and kept it cut, and I didn't have a duck's tail in the back, and didn't have it long, and I didn't go around in gangs and wear motorcycle jackets and all that junk. Uh, I sang the old sad Hank Williams songs and just, just, just alone all the time and, and cried and, and sang. It's just what per a person looks for and, and don't realize it's what he's needing until he finds it, you know, and you can't tell a person about it because uh, there's a blindness, uh, the devil blinds everybody. And it, I think this song right here kind of explains a lot of it. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Wait, I mean, I never hurt anybody, but I could look at things maybe that would have been different had I not been drinking so much, spending so much time at the taverns, trying to be what I thought was the image of a country entertainer from what I had seen and what I had heard. And I think it's uh, time to let people know that all country entertainers, they're not all uh, dope addicts, they're not all drunks, just those that haven't met Jesus. I guess it's what I had missed when I moved to the city. We got away from from God, and uh, it took me a long time. Uh, you know, I felt his presence as a child in church, and that's what I was looking for, I think, was the presence of God being with me again. The uh, first song that I'm going to sing, uh, I like to use it uh, on a lot of the programs I go on, because maybe it might get people to thinking. Because it kind of reminded me of what I used to be before I met uh, the Lord. The title of the song is, Lord, I've Tried Everything But You. I guess I've tried everything From drinking to hiding my wedding ring I've gambled and cheated and walked on a friend or two Live like a fool till I'm just plain tired And I feel all dirty inside Lord, I've tried everything but you Lord, I've tried everything but you And they tell me You're the man I've got to go Well, there's still time Oh, Lord, I've tried everything but you I almost came your 
way one time When I lost my family and part of my mind The devil's neon light came shining through <laughs> I followed them right back where I'd been Just doing the same things over again Lord, I've tried everything but you There's still time Cause Lord, I've tried everything but you Other Nashville musicians have returned home to the mountains, forsaking the false pride of the music business. I am a pilgrim, and a In Herb and Mary's Christian Diner, Larry Richardson has become a fully-fledged pilgrim for Christ. He threw up a flourishing career in music and TV. It's not, not made by man. As I go down to the river of Jordan Just to bathe my weary soul If I could touch but him and his garment, dear Lord, I believe it make me whole. I am a pilgrim and a stranger traveling through this worse land. And I've got a home in that yonder city, good Lord, and he's not, not made by man. Well, uh, I seem like that everything that I started to do, I thought, well, as a boy, that I'd be happy. But you know, there was something missing in my life, and I couldn't understand just exactly what it's all about. Well, I tried everything that I could, and I didn't know what to do. And I, knew, I knew that my mother up on top of the Blue Ridge Mountain, as a young boy, she said, now, son, when you need help, she told me the one to go to if I needed help. And so I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to help me and with this. But I found out that uh, by going to church that a sinner's prayer he does not hear. Nothing but be merciful to me, a sinner, and save my soul. Well, March 15, 1970, I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and I knew that things had changed. I walked outside that church. I've never saw sky so beautiful in all my life. I looked at a big tree there. The tree seemed like it was just patting its hands together, praising God, because I'd been born again. I said, I'll tell you one thing. I said, everybody will want what I've got. I said, I'm going to tell everybody in the world that I possibly can about the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, you know, people don't, lots of them don't believe it and all this stuff. But I say, if you haven't tried Jesus, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. Jesus will take me safely through. There be no detour in heaven, no rough road on the way. I'm using my Bible for road map. My last stop is heaven, some sweet day. I'm using my Bible for road map. The Ten Commandments they tell me what to do. The twelve disciples. 
and Jesus will take me safely through. Some mountain folks' literal use of their Bibles as a road map has led them down unusual paths. Federal courts have tried to protect certain holiness groups from the excesses of their own faith by outlawing their practices. In this privately taken film, Worshippers proclaim their faith by drinking poison. To some, holding snakes is like touching the devil himself, with all the excitement of tasting the forbidden fruit. has been bitten. This sect believes in the power of the Lord to heal. No medical help will be accepted. If he dies, it is in the service of the Lord, fighting the devil. Jesus said they shall send serpents and cockatrices amongst you, and they will bite you, saith the Lord. Amen, and we believe that serpents will bite you. Amen, and a lot of denominations, and lots of people, different people, they teach that the serpent that the Bible speaks of is a man or an unclean spirit. Jesus said, in my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. The snake bite victim recovered. Jimmy, the spokesman, later died from drinking strychnine. The hysteria and music of some churches were anathema to others. Nimrod Workman's family were primitive Baptists. Well, my mother didn't believe in it, and uh, uh, neither did my grandmother. They said that uh, it was a sin to play music uh, in church. I asked them why. And they said they read in the Bible where that uh, the old apostles took the harps and the music and hung it up on the willows. And they never did pick it up. And they said to this day and time it was a sin to pick it up or play it. With folk singer Hazel Dickens, Nimrod recalls an old Baptist hymn about the death of a wayfaring stranger. Wild traveling through this land today, I am a wonder to women and to men. Oh, mother, come and hold my. Oh, mother, hold up my dying head, for death has laid its hands on me. You could be excluded from the church even if you, um, if you participated in any kind of worldly thing like that, going to movies or... I can remember around the house, if I danced, my father would make me stop because he thought it was a sin. And uh, we only learned to dance after we left home. I came from a family of 11 children and uh, um, they, we lived around a mining community and most of my brothers were coal miners and my father had a truck that he hauled coal and for the families to heat their houses and he hauled timber for the mines and then preached on weekends. And uh, it was really hard to make ends meet, you know, for all those kids, and there was not a lot of money coming in. So church was a place for us to go where we didn't have, it didn't cost anything. Hazel turned her back on the strict religion of her preacher father. In the hard mountain life and the coal mines that pepper the Appalachians, 
the absence of God became filled by a different credo, socialism, as church songs gave way to protest and politics. He's a sick man, cause it cold us to get stand. But he don't expect to get no help from that operator man. The old obsessions of darkness and death remain. And it's goodbye, old timer. I guess our time has come. Those water holes, that dirty coal dust eating up our lungs. We'll leave this world just as poor as the day we saw the sun. Well, it's goodbye, old timer, all our mining is done. We'll leave this world just as poor as the day we saw the sun. It's goodbye, old timer, all our minds done. Though the coal mining districts are better known as centers of radical politics, many mining families remain devoutly Christian. Reverend Joe Freeman, once himself a miner, searches the area around Norton, Virginia for converts. I used to go out in revivals with this old gentleman from uh, over here in uh, down below Jenkins, Kentucky, yeah. Durham. Did you ever hear him, Dennis Durham? Durham, Durham. Durham. yeah. And, uh, he used to lay at night and cough, you know, where he had this black lung. And he'd wake me up at night, you know, coughing, setting up on the side of the smother and so forth. And I got the idea of writing this song about there being no black lung up in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I wrote it about my dad, you know, where he worked in the mines and all. And uh, it's just a song about the black lung. There'll be no black lung up in heaven. No smothering when they walk on streets of gold. The coal miners that make it in will be breathing good again. There'll be no black lung over there. There'll be no black lung up in heaven. No smothering when they walk on streets of gold. The coal miners that make it in will be breathing good again. There'll be no black lung over there. Joe Freeman has gone full circle in adapting commercial Nashville songs into a religious idiom. I listen to country singing, you know. If I hear a certain song I like, it seemed like something began to kind of run in my mind, you know. It's a good tune, so uh, why not make a good song out of it, you know? Kind of take a, a country song and make a gospel song out of it, you know? And a lot of them, they'll take a, a gospel song and make a country song or so, you know. So if the devil can steal one of ours, why can't we sort of straighten one of his out, you know what I mean? Actually, I, I never had to sing rock and roll or anything like that, but a lot of my songs kind of had that uh, uh, beat, you know, like to it, and uh, I'd go in church over here, and some uh, lady comes up to me, you know, and she says, uh, "God's little Elvis," you know, she come <laughs> and uh, so that kind of hung with me through the years, you know, because uh, some of the songs kind of, I guess, well, Elvis, you know, he started out in gospel too, you know, in the gospel church, that's where he got his feeling in the song, you know, and so forth, and that King G. I know you hear me when I pray King Jesus I know you hear me when I pray Well, I'm down here in trouble, Lord Send an angel by my way Joe 
Joe Freeman has brought rock and roll into his holiness church services. He has adapted the words to fit the old time religion that still guides the lives of his congregation. He's using the devil's music to chase the devil away. I know you hear me when I pray. wants a touch from God, you get right in this heel. Come on, my, my, hallelujah. This healing line tonight, hallelujah. And we believe that Jesus Christ, come on, Brother Tommy, up here with us, amen, hallelujah. Anybody feels like coming up here with us, amen, to pray for these sick folks, amen, come right on up here. Sister Marita. Oh, Lord, she's got trouble. Sister Patsy, raise your hands. God's going to move for you, honey. Your throat again. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. Whoa. Mama, Daddy, climb it up. Come on. Let's get the road one for And his baptized shall be saved, and the earth not shall be damned. We baptize this our sister in the name of the Father, which is the Lord God, and of the Son, which is the Lord Jesus, uh, and of the Holy Ghost. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. In the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 H